Good morning vlog. We made it to October. October 1st, Sunday morning, about 8.30 p.m. Hola, buenos dias. I love Sunday mornings in Mexico City because it is one of, not, not one, it is the only time where the city eases up a little bit where the constant noise, the constant friction, the constant hustle and bustle very temporarily slows down. People here like to party hard, live hard. I can imagine most of them didn't go to bed until five, so I, there's like a three to four hour window between 6 a.m., 5 a.m., and 9. Like, in one hour, it'll, it'll already be a lot more intense once again. So, I love taking these opportunities. So, October, like I said, it was a wild September and not an easy one, but an interesting one. And we're gonna start off by talking about, you guys know my biggest, well, one of my biggest ongoing struggles has basically been my chronicle usage of weed. You know, just for those who are unaware, weed was something I heavily relied on during my chemo and my trials and tribulations with cancer to basically maintain an even keel and specifically during the keynote to be able to eat because I was just nauseous without it all the time and then that basically spilled over into let's see that spilled over yeah I'm trying to take less chances guys and in, in, in the other vlogs like <laughs> you might have seen me crossing streets and stuff and then barely avoiding people getting hit so I'm trying to be more conservative but either I when I'm walking I want to walk I want to go and one of the things I hate the most about this city is that the red lights are abhorrent like if it's red it stays red for like three days so you have to wait so long I hate that shit and there's so much constant traffic and people don't get the, they don't get the damn, so it's dangerous like to skip in between. Um, so like it's just me waiting on, on that motorbike to pass, that felt like eternity. It's like, come on, man, you got the pace, I wanna go, I wanna move. Um, anyway, I was saying, basically talking about like how my, Use of weed, usage of weed during my keno and all that basically spilled over into a decade long, decade long addiction. Um, which is, I'm not claiming that addiction has now been conquered, but I finally got to a point where I really, I'm actively taking steps. To lessen my usage and to have it under control and just so we're clear when i say usage like i'm, I'm not like one of those wake and bake all day stoners like i'm talking like one joint in the evening to be able to sleep all right so just that's the level we're talking about but i'm i know for some a lot of people think i'm like what are you talking about that's nothing don't, don't worry about that well it's not nothing it's not. It heavily impacts your life. In many ways, a lot of people that love weed are in absolute denial about. People misunderstand, they misconceive, they think that you're only high, you know, those first couple of hours after you smoked, but really, it fully impacts the, your whole next day, like your mindset, how you view life, how you act. So 
I say all that to say, today I'm on day 22 of no weed and it has turned my world upside down. It has helped me remember things that I had long forgotten. I'm not, I don't wanna, I wasn't gonna, I don't wanna make this video about that. I just wanted to kind of bring it up. So I'll, I'll keep it brief, but the main things I've noticed is that weed makes you a bitch, weed makes you weak, weed makes you wanna huddle up in a corner and die. It robs you of your ambition and it does not allow you to talk a life <coughs> with the ferocity that is required to get ahead in life. So I've discovered, I've rediscovered this edge that I thought I had forgotten or that I had, that had kind of like, you know, gone away with age. But it hasn't, it's just that when I'm fully sober, that sounds so dramatic, fully sober. But yeah, when I don't smoke, I just have this like, I'm on it, I'm on the motherfucking ball and I'm ready to like, I'm in attack mode and you really need that. Especially in big city, not just in big city life, but especially in big city life. Like you need that edge to get ahead, to, to get ahead at your job. But most importantly, you really need that edge to approach and talk to women when you're single. And you're looking to do that, like if that's something that you're into, which I definitely am. And it's funny because I feel like I've replaced one drug for another, which is I've replaced smoking weed with basically cold approaching women and did I say that right? Cold approaching women and uh, and basically just like overcoming my inner fears. Whenever I see a woman that I really really like, I just go up to them and I try to talk to them and see, you know, see what I could pull like Devin the Great, Devin the Dude always says. Um, and if you, it's not, and, and guys, it's not about sex, it's not about like conquering, no, it's about the dopamine rush, the incredible feeling comes from you walking up to that woman and having the balls to basically introduce yourself. That's it. Everything else is bonus, but the feeling that I get every time I'm, I'm successfully able to do that is undescribable. It's just insane like you literally feel like you can do anything you're on top of the world and nothing can stop you just like absolute power it's a crazy power rush it's wild because when you think about it what you're doing is when you're approaching a woman and you're like introducing yourself it's like the final form of presenting your life's work it's the ultimate bar exam it's the the grandest of the juries you'll ever face in life because you are literally presenting your body, your personality, the person uh, that you've created in 35 years, which is literally your life's work, like literally. So you're presenting that to this jury, which is this woman, woman. And you're basically, not basically, you are asking her, like, hey, what do you think? Good enough or not? And that's that fear that we feel. That nausea in our stomach right before we're about to like walk up to a girl, like, that's because we fear, we think we might not be good enough. So, when you can overcome that fear and you can convince yourself that you have a decent shot and you are good enough, I highly recommend it to anyone. 
I want to say, I was going to say any man, then I was thinking like just any, anyone, but it's hard for me to speak to females from the male perspective. And the way our society is set up, um, it's mostly expected that the guy walks up, which sucks, but that's the way it is. Um, but in order for you to be able to do that, you need every little inkling of power that you possibly can muster up. So what that means is you cannot do this on weed. You cannot, there's just, there's no way. Let me maneuver. Yeah, there's no way you can do this when you're smoking weed and you're being passive and you're waking up all mellow and soft. You need that raw edge of sobriety. You need that like, that growl. That's what I mean when I say you gotta be able to tackle life. And, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but I wanna be complete in my assessment. Um, alcohol, not good. Alcohol, not good, but I have noticed that when I don't smoke, a beer here and there does enhance that edge. Like, to put it bluntly, alcohol makes you more, yeah, also makes you more aggressive. Like, there's a reason why people on alcohol wanna fight and do dumb shit. And people on weed don't wanna fight and just wanna chill. And those effects, like, when you're not smoking and you're just like, and then you have a beer or two. Especially with me, like, as long as you moderate it, it can definitely help. It'll give you a nice little boost, to say the least. Because alcohol enhances that, 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 that power. Now, please. I'm an, I'm an idiot for starting to walk next to the main street. Uh, please don't take this as me saying, like, hey, go, go get drunk. Like, no, I'm just saying, like, every now and then, if it's a weekend and you're going out and you've given up smoking, you are allowed to have a drink. And that drink will only kind of aid you if you're trying to be assertive and need, need girls and get ahead. Um, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. So, there's also, I guess you could say downsides to, to just being fully on and fully engaged. So you guys know the saga of me and my roommates. I put out a video called, I have the worst roommates in the world. Uh, and um, then I think not even that long ago, I was quite mild on the whole topic. I was like, well, you know, I think I was over exaggerating. It's not that bad. And I kind of found a balance and I was quite happy with my roommates and the relationship at some point was as good as it had ever been. Well, another person, a new person, was added to the house, was added to the matrix. And the only way to describe that person would be as a fire starter. So somebody with bad habits, somebody with a lack of hygiene, a lack of cleanliness, but a very strong personality. Very dominant leader type of person. And this person basically allowed the ones who are like, the ones who are sus susceptible, susceptible to, is that, is that a word? 
susceptible, I want to say, susceptible to being influenced or swayed in, in both directions. Uh, that person basically convinced them it's okay to be dirty, it's okay to be disgusting, it's okay to throw your dishes in the sink and let them rot and stink. Ah, poetic, right? And uh, yeah, I saw this unfold, I saw it happening. Um, tried to do what I can, but it was in vain. And then one morning I woke up and I went down and the kitchen was just as bad as it's ever been. I'm, I, I made a video of it, I'm, I'm almost tempted to put it in here and show you guys what I'm talking about. I might, I might. Let me think on it. Just to show you guys like what I'm talking about. Like, Cause I don't want you guys to think that I'm this like obsessed clean freak who freaks out because there's like a cup of coffee in the sink, you know what I mean? Like, so I just want to kind of like show you guys the level I'm talking about. Um, by the way, we are now entering Doctores, which is by all accounts still considered to be the hood and a relatively shady, dodgy, dangerous hood anytime I tell my... And it's funny because I had recorded here before, unknowingly. Um, anytime I tell my Mexican friends that I walk through it, let alone vlog, they can't kind of freak out. So let's see that. Sunday morning obviously is fine, as you can tell. Um, I cannot reiterate enough how safe Mexico City is um, if you stay in the bubble. Roma Norte, Juarez, Condesa, Polanco, even Doctores, Centro, it's all super safe. Anyway, so came to the kitchen and I was just like, it was just abhorrent. And uh, I didn't react in the moment because I was like, let me, you know, I was, I was trying to be all zen and trying to like not overreact. And then I went out and I came back to the cleaning lady. Her name is Mercedes. We have the nicest cleaning lady in the world. And she's just a good woman. She, she's like, she's kind of been my mom a little bit here. You know, we just had a good relationship. She's so sweet. And, um, I came home to her trying to clean up that mess and she was telling me like I've been cleaning for two hours and it's still not dirty, uh, it's still not clean. And she was just expressing frustration and disappointment with how dirty the place had become ever since that person moved in. And yeah man, that's sort of my, that's sort of my sense of like righteousness justice kicks in it's one thing and if I'm being duped like I could maybe take that to a certain extent but if I see people that I that I care about people that I value being kind of victimized due to the shitty and selfish behavior behavior of others that's when I see get that see it's a little dangerous the zona so that you don't get anything. Ah, yes, yeah, I know. I'm here like I'm almost. Ah. That's why in the morning it's more dangerous. Ah, yes. But thank you for telling me. Thank you very much. I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go. Okay, so... That guy... I was kind of weary. I thought he was... Uh, he was calling me over. I was like... Is he setting me up? Um, he was on a motorcycle. And he basically told me he wanted to warn me that it's a dangerous neighborhood here and it can be really bad. So, yeah. Uh, you see that person in the background? That person is a zombie. A real zombie, ladies and gentlemen. Unhinged. Um, so, yeah, that person wanted to tell me. Now I'm a, now I'm a little bit, you know, person was telling me like you gotta be careful in this neighborhood it's a it's a bad neighborhood it's, it's a, it can be a little, little bit dangerous he said especially with the camera um, and then I told him like well I I know thank you I've been here before um, 
and I, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now I gotta say, like, that's the thing, though. When somebody, like, goes out of their way to tell you, like, dude, you're in a dangerous area, it's a little, little bit of a wake-up call. But yeah, so I told him, like, yeah, that's why I come in the morning. I come here almost every day. But thank you for telling me. Um, good on that guy, man. He was a Uber Eats delivery guy. Good on that person, because certainly he gauged the situation as needing a lost tourist vlogger, thinking it's all good. Um, and even saying that, I'm probably overestimating my cachet and like how safe it is for me here. Anyway, let me see. 20 minutes. You know what? I feel like I should wrap it up. Um, uh, take a bike here. This is the only place I could take a bike. So let me stop recording here. Or let me just like, basically, I can wrap it up. Um, I flipped out on my roommates and I was like, I, I told them like, look, in the group chat, I said, I'm done being nice about it. I'm done being patient. You guys are disgusting. And I literally told them, I said, I guess it's gonna have to get a lot more uncomfortable in here in order for you guys to finally get it and, and keep the place clean. And uh, yeah, needless to say, they didn't take it too well. And uh, right now I'm in a situation where <laughs> there are six of us and five of them are just like ignoring me and not talking to me, acting like I don't exist, which I guess is what is the natural result from what I said and what I did. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Hasn't been easy, it's a very toxic environment, but I pride myself on being able to, once again, maintain an even keel, even in the most dire situations. I keep telling myself like, dude, I went through cancer. I can deal with some passive aggressive, shitty roommates in their 20s who are upset at me. So fuck them. That's basically where I'm at. Um, I may or may not do another video on this to go more in depth, but I feel like I've already complained a lot about them and I don't want to give it more energy, nor light. They are shitty, immature people. Um, I have low hopes for the future generation of 20 year olds, specifically Americans. I find that they are uh, just different. It's hard for me to connect with them. And they operate on passive aggression and awkwardness. That's what they do. And they are just like not responsible and very egocentric and very selfish and very hard to deal with because you can have the conversation with them and think you come you come to an agreement or, or a conclusion, but then like they just want to get out of that conversation because they're so adverse to real life interaction. And then they'll just you'll think like, oh it's all sorted, but then you'll see nothing is sorted. So yeah. Those are my current thoughts on that. I'm gonna wrap it up now. I think uh, yeah, we got like almost 24 minutes. I'm gonna wrap it up, put away the camera. I'm not gonna lie, the guy warning me did spook me a little bit. I do believe in science. And, and not being cocky. So, gonna put away the camera, take a bike, and get on, get on over to the gym. Peace out.